What's up, YouTube? Welcome to my Magic Site 1.5 Starter Guide. Uh, this guide is basically the uh, how-to basics of the game Magic Site, which is developed by Sean Young, and it's basically it's a roguelike game, but it has a lot of elements of survival mixed in. So basically, let me move back to the title screen here. Uh, the game is essentially a roguelike slash platformer slash terraria combat survival based game. And if that sounds overwhelming at first, don't worry because the game is actually quite fun in concept and in, uh, you know, play playability. So let's go ahead and uh, look at the single player menu. Of course you can actually play multiplayer with your friends. And uh, look at the logbook. This is basically, the logbook is a uh, record, of course, of all the stuff that you've done in the game. Of course, I've been playing a ton, so I have some pretty high numbers around here. But anyway. For options, you do have some basic options. Obviously, this is a indie game uh, by Sean Young, music by Wonderflux, and you can toggle the full screen and stuff. You can uh, toggle your resolution, delete all your data. The audio is also an audio button, but not too uh, kind of in depth of an options menu. But that's fine for a game like this. So let's go ahead and go into the menu, uh, the single player menu again. Uh, for your first time playing, you're going to have one race unlocked, and the races are basically like you'd expect from any kind of game. They give you certain bonuses, they start off with certain items, and uh, generally they affect the playstyle of your run. So there's a bunch of different races, but the first one you're going to unlock is the Peon, which is a starter race. It gives you HP plus one, which of course this is like, like an RPG kind of a uh, roguelike game. So you do have different uh, attributes including HP, attack, dex, and magic which all affect your playstyle. And he also starts off with an axe. So like I was saying, uh, this game has a lot of elements of survival and terraria and things like Minecraft mixed in. It does have a crafting uh, menu and things like that, so you will be having to memorize some recipes, although it is quite easy to do. Now for your variant, the variant is only a thing that changes the look of your character, and I believe if you beat the character with a certain race, like if you beat the character with a peon, you will unlock, or if you die with a peon, you'll unlock a different variant for the peon. Uh, but that doesn't really matter, it doesn't affect your playstyle anyway, it just changes your look. For your hat, there's a bunch of different kinds of hats, and they basically just give you a certain uh, ability or upgrade to your stats. And uh, in, in the beginning, I don't think you start off with any hats, uh, but basically there are a wide variety of hats. There are some which increase the ores you get from different nodes. There is the overworld helm, which is the hardest helm to unlock, and it basically reduces all your damage by half. And there are also interesting helms like the Scourge Mask, which really isn't a benefit, it just decreases your health every two minutes. And there are things like the Tyronix Hat and the Dragon Hat, which allow you to spew fireballs and meteors and stuff. So it's generally a, adds a nice variety, a layer of variety to the game, and allows you to kind of uh, tweak your playstyle a little bit depending on the hat that you choose. But obviously when you start off with the first game, you won't have any of these hats. And now we go on to companions. So companions are another layer of variety, basically. They give you a, a specific bonus. Things like it drops a random item for you, you can, your speed is doubled, your mana regenerates faster, your stats increase more, etc. But you won't start off with any of these in the beginning, so I won't be starting off with them. Although they are very, very handy if you do want to unlock them. Uh, I would definitely recommend unlocking all of them, uh, except the gadget guard. I haven't even bothered to unlock the gadget guard because it's, it's pretty useless. Just don't bother with it. The other thing I didn't unlock, which you might have seen, is the gin, and the gin is, is <laughs> incredibly hard to unlock, and even I haven't uh, tried to yet. You have to beat the game by only killing the Scourge Wall. So if you guys haven't ever heard of this game before, which I'm not sure why you wouldn't, uh, but the Scourge Wall, or the story of Magicite really, is that these people have been driven underground by this thing called the Scourge, which are basically like undead monsters, uh, like the name implies. But people have been driven underground to Deep Haven, and you are a hero here to rid the world of the Scourge. So you basically journey through uh, ten randomly generated districts. And at the end of every district, there is a town, which you can, of course, sell all the resources that you built up for some gold. You can craft items, you can craft armor, and things like that. And at the end of the ten districts and the ten towns, there is a thing called the Scourge Lair. And that is basically where the Scourge Wall, which if you ever play Terraria, is uh, pretty similar to the Wall of Flesh. He, he, uh, he lives there. So you have to go ahead and take him out. Depending on your playstyle, you will, of course, uh, be gathering different resources and crafting different weapons throughout the game. Now over here you have your traditional RPG stats, HP, attack, dex, magic, and some traits which affect your playstyle again. Uh, you can randomize your stats, there are some pretty good ones like Potion Brewer, it helps you uh, with the potion department, as HP potions and mana potions are going to be a big, uh, kind of, a valuable resource in the game, of course, for restoring your HP. And this game, this game in the beginning is going to be very, very hard for you guys, by the way. You will be taking a lot of hits, and the one tip that I can say is just to keep on playing. So practice makes perfect, repetition is always a good thing. Uh, make sure that you're always dodging around with Q and E. That's a thing that I've, uh, I've seen most new players not really bother to take a look at, is dodge. 
But other stats that you might want to grab uh, are the dex bonuses, you can grab the attack bonuses, and the magic bonuses. HP bonuses are also pretty good. Uh, but with a new update, there is a thing called the Lockmaster. And golden chests, or chests in general, do have a chance to give you pretty good stuff. But golden chests have a chance to give you <laughs> really good stuff. So Lockmaster is a good trade, although I wouldn't pick it for your first playthrough because you won't be running in on into any golden chests on the first level. So for my uh, f playthrough here, I think I'll go with, let's see here. Uh, mm, Dex is always the, is the easiest way of beating the game. So I think I'll go with that, and I'll show you guys how to do that. And this is a pretty good stat layout for the beginning. You do get a nice attack bonus, because in the beginning of the game, uh, you only have your <laughs> wooden sword. You don't have a bow or any magical abilities yet. So it's good to have an attack bonus to take things out rapidly in the beginning. So let's go ahead and create our character and jump into the world of Magisite. Yes. Alright, here we are in the first district of the Tree Fang Forest. So obviously as you start off as a peon, you do actually get two random, uh, ran random items along with the axe that you're given in the beginning. Uh, so you want to make sure that you, uh, you press R to open the inventory by the way, it was a lag spike there, but that's fine. Uh, you can drag items over, and of course the crafting menu down here is shift click, two items to craft. So let's try this. We can go ahead and mine or chop down all these trees in this area. And uh, let's see, we can go ahead and craft these two. So if you use the right mouse button to split the stack, you can shift click to combine them. Just like this. And you combine some things and you make yourself a wooden blade. So two wood makes a wooden plank, and two wooden planks makes a blade. And then with the sticks, you can basically uh, craft a variety of tiers of weapons. So two of them will make an axe handle. Add another stick and you have your pick handle. So a pick handle is great because you can go ahead and mine all the resources in, the, in these little uh, rock nodes. But we of course do want to get some more wood because uh, what good is a Magisite player without a trusty sword? So let's go ahead and make that. Uh, just combine a wooden plank with a stick to make a sword hilt. And then after that you can go ahead and combine two wood, two planks, and you have yourself a sword. And the items in the game have a random chance to get a bonus to their attack stats or any other stat. It basically comes up as a different colored tooltip. Uh, obviously the wooden pick got two attack bonus, just like the wooden sword which is kind of strange in my opinion. So, some of these mobs on here, of course, you have your generic pigs, which drop a good amount of food. And that's re really where the survival aspect of the game comes into play. The food is basically like in any game, your hunger bar. Uh, these are some of the uh, uh, more, I guess, aggressive mobs in the game. There are spiders, slimes, there's a whole variety of things, really. Uh, we can go ahead and mine this rock as well. And with that rock, we get stone. And with stone, you can actually advance through the tiers, just like in Minecraft. From wood in, to stone, to iron, to gold, to diamond, eventually. And if you guys take a look in the upper right hand corner of the screen, you will see the 10 out of 11 red bar is my HP. Of course, I have 11 HP, which is pretty nice. I also have my hunger bar up there, 7 out of 8. I have my mana, 3 out of 3, and I have my stamina. And stamina is the dodging I was talking about, so pressing Q will let you dodge in midair like that. And if you look in the upper left, that's my toolbar, the hot bar, of course, my gold, which I get from slaying enemies, and my level bar, which uh, is where all my EXP goes when I kill an enemy. So if I go ahead and kill this guy, my EXP should increase a bit. And every five levels you will present it with an option. Basically, I'll, I'll show you guys that when we get there. Now for your first run, what you're going to want to focus on is killing everything in sight, basically. Gathering all the resources and trees. As uh, in this Magisite run, resources are, of course, a number one priority. You want to make sure that you're grabbing basically everything. However, you shouldn't take too long in a level. Which most people, uh, kind of, if they've come into the game as a new player, they will not really know about this. But if you take too long in a level, a thing called the Scourge, of course I talked about the Scourge before, but the Scourge will come and try to uh, basically eat you, and uh, they will one-shot you basically. And they are super powered mobs. But if you didn't, if you guys didn't notice that I did get a piece of coal from that rock, and coal can be used in combination with a stone or with another piece of coal to make a fire starter. And those fire starters can smelt your food just like in any other game. And cooked food, of course, restores more hunger than raw food. So it's always good to keep on top of that. Of course, that node right there was a gold node, but I couldn't get it because I don't have enough stone. Actually, I do have enough stone now, but I did not have an ironite pick, so... Just like in Minecraft, you can't uh, grab the gold unless you have an ironite pick. But I can do the same thing with the stone as I did with the wood, and make myself a stone blade, and of course, do the same thing again, and make myself a stone pick, advancing through the tiers, and that stone pick actually got a pretty good uh, a pretty good bonus there, which is kind of cool. Here's the B again. Uh, th these, all these mobs have different attack patterns, and it really just takes up some practice to learn them. And once you have them down, you can, you should be able to kill them relatively easily. 
Uh, these slimes just jump back and forth. The spiders jump every few seconds and just charge you. And these slimes actually drop some HP potions. So uh, the slimes will either drop herbs H or HP potions. And those, of course, can be used to restore your HP. And herbs can be crafted together to create H more HP potions. And those HP potions can be crafted together to make big ones. And the big ones are source 5 and the little ones are source uh, 2. So it's always good to keep your HP potions until you get at least two, and you can combine those two to make a HP potion or a big one, which restores more HP than normal. Now with this stone pick, we can actually mine the rocks and get ourselves some ironite. And that ironite will be very useful for crafting the ironite pick I was talking about earlier, and mining or <laughs> mining more ironite and crafting some armor. Of course, our axe just broke there, which is fine. We have enough sticks and wood to last a lifetime. And if you guys haven't noticed, we did get monster pelts and monster hides from those enemies that we were killing. And those can be used in turn with uh, some ironite to craft ourselves some first of our armor, as well as the monster bones and things like that. But anyway, in the first level, just make sure you don't take as much damage, because the forest over here is the easiest biome of them all. There are many different biomes. But uh, you want to make sure that you don't take as much damage in the forest, because uh, later biomes, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to survive if you do take too much damage. Of course, I've never played, I haven't beat the game as a peon, like raw peon like this. But anyway, let's see here. We did get level 5, which is pretty nice. You will have to select the skill path for this run. I will be going a dex-based character, so let's go ahead and pick the green skill. And the skills are basically like any RPG. You get them every five levels. And it's, it's this, this skill is called the Fire Wisp. And you basically press either Z, X, or C. So I press Z, and there comes a Fire Wisp. If I shoot arrows into that Fire Wisp, then they will do double damage. Which is pretty nice, especially against harder enemies that have a lot of more hit points. But you want to make sure that you kill everything. Of course, the XP is great, but the gold is also fantastic. And our stone sword did just break there. Or not our stone sword, but a, uh, our wood sword. So let's go ahead and make another one of those, just by crafting as I did before. Just like this. Bam, bam. You want to make sure you always have a weapon on you, because uh, uh, killing mobs with your fist is not exactly the most viable way of doing things. But yeah, just mining all the rocks. Uh, in your first playthrough, uh, it will be a bit daunting, but make sure that you just keep practicing, because I remember my first time playing this was, uh, <laughs> was pretty terrible. I died uh, a lot of times. And of course, as you keep on playing, and if you do die, you will be presented with a, uh, a screen, which basically is, um, you know, a defeat, and then it has a bunch of chests on it. And those chests can uh, hold hats and things like that. So if you, feel f if you fulfill certain requirements during your run, and you die, or you win, or whatever, you will be rewarded with those hats, or races, or things. And I will go into those more in depth later. But let's kill the slime. And that uh, little firefly here over there is not just an aesthetic. You can actually catch those and craft magical weapons with them. That is a bit more advanced for your first uh, starter guide, so I will not be going to that. So at the end of the level, you will reach yourself. Uh, well, you will get to the gateways or the three uh, doors to the next biome. And of course, the green ones are the forest ones, and this other one is the ice one. I would recommend always sticking with the forest because the forest is the easiest. Only go into the ice if you're feeling pretty risky, but the forest is a pretty, a pretty good option, as it is the easiest one out of the batch. And of course, at the end of every district, you will come to a town, and in the town, you can sell all your stuff. You come to this guy, uh, Havel the Hoarder, and you can sell some of the stuff you're not going to need. Of course, we will need the spider webs. Combining two spider webs will make a string, and of course, uh, going up the tiers and sticks, we can make ourselves a unstrung bow, and combine that with string to make ourselves a bow, or a strung bow, which I guess is just a bow. You can sell the rest of the spider webs, though. And selling items does give you a small amount of gold. It doesn't matter what the item is, it just gives you always gives you one gold. So if you mine like a bunch of wood and stuff, you can actually sell that for a decent amount. Monster pelts are used to make magical armor, so we're not going to need that. Uh, we can keep our HP potions up there, and craft ourselves a stone sword as well, because we have enough resources to do so. Let's go ahead and make ourselves a sword hilt and our stone sword. And of course, the stone sword and pickaxe have 50% uh, more damage than the other one. So this one has attack plus 4, while the wooden one had attack plus 3. Uh, we can craft some more HP potions. As always, staying on top of HP potions is fantastic. Uh, uh, if you do take too much damage, you will die, of course. So you want to make sure that you're not doing that. Uh, our health, our hunger is going down slightly, but I'm not too worried about that. And there are some shops down here that you can buy stuff with your gold. And this is the iron I pick I was talking about. You have swords, you have uh, hilts or mysterious potions, which I'll go into later. But yes, at the blacksmith down here, actually, you can craft up your ironite ore into some bars. And once you have enough bars, you can make yourself some tools. Of course, I only have one, so I'll go into that later. And there are, all, all, there are also chickens that you can kill for food. And this is a new thing, 1.5, but a chicken boss will spawn. So if, it's, if it is your first time playing, I would not recommend killing the chickens because this chicken boss is... It has a lot of HP. It's not too hard to take out, though. 
It's basically just like your average boar. <laughs> we, are, we are actually killing the townspeople when we're doing this. But you want to make sure you're not, take too, not taking too much damage. And I've noticed the Chicken King is actually a pretty good way of getting EXP early on in the game. As he's pretty easy to take out. He just he has a standard attack pattern with just charging you. And of course, he will be a huge, uh, I don't know, I guess you could say, uh, durability sink into our sword early on. But hopefully we can actually kill him. He's taking a lot of hits. Uh, please, Chicken King, die. I have a guy to do. Oh, Chicken King. Please, how much HP does this guy have? He is new in 1.5. I checked him out on the wiki, and he randomly spawns after killing... Oh my gosh. So our sword just died, or it just broke. And we did kill the Chicken King, though. And we got some nice EXP. So I would not recommend doing that for your first time, but... I've never actually seen that fight before, so it was pretty fun to do that. It is a new thing, as I was saying before. We did use up our, our entire stone sword on that fight, though. So, that is obviously not the best. But I think we are good to go. I won't, we won't be killing any more chickens anymore because uh, I would not like to fight that guy anymore. He did he did drop one HP potion, which is fine. Let's go ahead and move on to the next district. Of course, just the forest again. We don't have an, an Iron Knight uh, pick, so we can't mine this uh, node for gold. Of course, you can still mine the node, you just don't get the actual gold from it. Uh, but let's see here. Uh, we don't have... Actually, we should do, we could do with chopping some more trees down because you always want to stay on top of your wood, especially when you're being a ranger or an archer, uh, as uh, chopping your... Your trees will prove uh, very handy for getting, gathering sticks, which with those sticks and with some stone, you can make yourself some arrows. Uh, let's see if I can't show you guys that. Actually, I can't yet. After I mine one more stone, I can, though. And uh, if you are in a dangerous situation like I was up there with the two bees, don't be afraid to jump out of the way because uh, being, being safe is always better than being sorry, you know? Or rather safer than sorry. Uh, so you want to make sure that you uh, avoid those dangerous situations, even if, you, if it means like risking some EXP or some HP potions you wouldn't get. It is always better to dodge out of the way than to <laughs> take unnecessary damage. As the damage you will be uh, taking is generally just stupid damage. You'll jump into enemies, you'll accidentally double jump and then land on an, en an enemy, things like that. But if you didn't see those little bush or grass tuft, and I did pick up some herbs from that, which is pretty nice. You can use those to make the HP potions as I said before. Uh, but yes, your first run, uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't be getting too far, and the, at least uh, I hope not because if you did get so far in the game, I would I would think that you were pretty good. But uh, on your first run, you might die on the first or two districts. I know I did, so don't be frustrated. It does take some while, a while to learn. Uh, I did get a bit frustrated though in my first few times playing it. But once you get good, of course, you will stick into a routine like do this first and then do this, and then after a while you will be able to progress your way through the districts and eventually defeat the Scourge. And now hopefully at the end of this district, we will go ahead and uh, go into a different biome. Of course, the forest does get a bit mundane after a while. It is the easiest biome, but of course, it does not give the highest rewards. And uh, let's see here, we did get another stone, so I can show you guys some stone arrows. Just combine some refined stone with some wooden sticks and you get some arrows. With those arrows, of course, you can do some long range sniping. Bam, with the right mouse button. And you can shoot enemies from afar without them having to kill you. Which I think is the best way to play the game. As taking enemies out from afar is always better than going in there with your sword. And risking taking any damage. So let's see here. We have a chest which is, of course I was talking about those before with the golden chests. And we do get an obsidian sword. So basically what you do is you just uh, hit the chest and stuff will spawn out of it. And an obsidian sword is actually one of the rarest drops from the chest. It is uh, basically a diamond. It's better than a diamond sword. Uh, but I will not be using this as it is a bit overpowered, but if you guys do manage to get one of those, uh, you should probably use them. Chests do have a very, very rare chance of spawning in a forest biome, so I was pretty lucky to scoop that one up. I will be saving his durability for the later uh, levels if we do get there. Uh, you want to make sure that you mine all the stone or ironite, as uh, you will need them later on for arrows, especially if you're playing a ranger. And what I did, of course, uh, what most people do when they first start Magicite, is they think like, oh, I can only use this sword, I have to craft higher tiers of swords. And of course, there is a lot more elements to the game than that. Uh, a ranger is, of course, one of the easiest ways to play the game, but there is not another thing called going magic. Of course, you do have a mana bar for a reason, so you might as well use it later on. If you guys did not see uh, the three guides I released earlier, you might want to check those out because I do explain how to play the different playstyles of all the different classes you can uh, you can do in the in the game. So I want to make sure that we have some hunger in our bar because we are starving, which is obviously not the best. You want to make sure that you don't starve, guys, because don't starve is a great game. When I like I like playing that one, uh, but Magicite for you guys is also a pretty good one. But those spiders drop a good amount of EXP, uh, but the, the uh, spider webs we're not going to need anymore. 
So it's okay if you get rid of stuff. Don't be afraid to drop stuff. Uh, of course, in most RPGs, my general mentality is to kill everything, uh, chop down every trees, and I th chop down every tree. And I think Magicite is a good way of stopping you from doing that because, of course, your axes run out of durability and things like that. Shrimps are used just like herbs, except they make a mana potion, so we're not going to be needing those or the monster pelts. And of course, you did see my armor slots and everything here, my attack stats, and my general stats, and uh, I also have two slots for rings, which we'll get into later on, and my stats here as well, as well as, well as my skill. But let's keep going and mining some more stuff and through the perilous adventures of Magicite. This game is one of my, my favorite games so far, or right now anyway. The developer did put a lot of work into this game, and I know that he is actually developing a new one called Roguelands. I'm not sure if I'll play that or not, because this game is a... Uh, pretty much taking up most of my time, but I hope that it is as good, if not better. We do come to the crossroads again, and some slimes are giving me a bit of trouble here. <laughs> That's fine. Of course, we do come to a set of open doors. Love is an open door. Unfortunately, there's not any frozen biome, <laughs> but this is the swamp biome, which is uh, it's a bit harder than the forest, but I think we'll stick with the forest for now. And hopefully, in the next biome, we'll go ahead and uh, get a way up to level 10 and get our next skill. But anyway, in 1.5, or I don't think 1.5, but recently, in a new update, uh, Sean Young released these things called altars, which basically for 500 gold. I'm not sure why it costs that much. The gods are really uh, <laughs> rich, but uh, they will require you to pay 500 gold for their blessing. And of course, it's, it's random what they do. Uh, it could restore all your HP. You could get an attack bonus, or nothing could happen. Or you could get like minus attack or things like that. But it does. It, it is a pretty good risk if you don't have anything else to spend your gold on. But let's go over here and sell all of this stuff and make ourselves some more HP potions because. Uh, you want to make sure that you have a bunch of those for your uh, for your escapades. Uh, let's see here. We do have enough Iron Knight to make ourselves something. Let's go over to the Blacksmith. And of course, just as before, dropping down some Iron Knight into the uh, Blacksmith. We can make ourselves an Iron Knight pick, just like that. Make an Iron Knight blade. And of course, I would always make a pick before making a sword, because with a pick, you can mine the next tier of uh, Goldium or you know Diamondite, the next tier of Ore. And it's always better to make that pick before the sword. As we do have a pretty good sword already, and I think we'll go ahead and make ourselves a stone sword anyway, and make some arrows as well, because arrows are fantastic, especially in the later uh, levels or districts. So let's see here, make ourselves a sword hilt, just like this. And the towns, they don't have a, a, a time requirement, so the Scourge won't actually invade the towns, which is always nice. You can spend as much time as you want in here. And the, the last thing I wanted to say about <laughs> staying in the towns for a while is that if you press escape, of course it brings up the menu. Uh, but you can't actually save the game. You can either resume or quit. And if you do quit, then all your progress is lost. It is basically a permadeath game, like most roguelike games are. But uh, you will start over from the beginning, and uh, you don't get any rewards. So if you do want to quit the game, I would recommend dying, as it is better than just quitting, as dying actually gives you some rewards. But yes, do not quit the game. And if you do want to take a break, uh, t take a break in one of the towns and just hit escape, because it will pause the game. Uh, but yes, if you do take too long in the biomes, as I said before, the scourge will come and kill you. So basically, uh, what I'm trying to say is don't take a break and expect to come back and find your Magicite player alive because he will be long dead. So let's go ahead and go into the next district, district number 5, Deep Fire Forest. And there's a nice amount of ores here, which is pretty, pretty good. And another thing I have to mention about this game is the music. I think the music is fantastic. Uh, Wonderful Lux or something, I think, did the music for this game, and I think it's, uh, it's really, really amazing. It definitely sets the mood. It is really nice, uh, it really really goes well with the game, that is uh, definitely a great set of musical production here. And let's see, we have some spiders and a boar, I don't think we've ever come across a boar before. Uh, that rhymes, a boar before. But boars are basically just your generic charging enemy, they'll charge at you, and then just stop for a little bit, and then charge again. And they're not too hard to take out, but once you, they do, they do do a lot of damage. So once you learn the attack pattern, it shouldn't be too hard to take them out. However, you'll be taking a lot of damage from them anyway if you do get hit. So I'd recommend just uh, maybe skipping those for now until you actually become a bit more experienced or have some better armor or stuff. Uh, the bees do fly around, so they're a bit harder to dodge, but the boars are not too hard to take out. And of course, like I said before, you want to make sure that you're killing everything. And But if it's too hard for you, don't don't sweat it. You, don't, you can just uh, skip things. And of course, there's a random chance to get a critical hit, which, like in all games, I'm pretty sure just doubles the damage of your sword or your axe hit. Your axe hits. So let's go ahead and use this opportunity to craft some food. So two pieces of coal or a coal and a stone. You can make a fire starter and make yourself a campfire. Excuse me. And we go ahead and uh, smelt up or cook up all of our meat. 
uh, nice and juicy meats and we can go ahead and chow down because I am starving and when you're starving you do lose one HP uh, every few minutes I think just like the scourge mask let's go ahead and kill that guy and uh, making our way downtown walking fast uh, <laughs> Down here we do have a lot of pigs just huddled in the corner. I found that the pigs AI does tend to, tend to make them huddle in a corner like that. But I guess it's, it's, uh, it's good for us. Uh, let's see. Hopefully the next time we can go ahead and make ourselves some armor. Because I am taking a bit more damage than I thought I would. We do have a good supply of HP potions on the ready though. So uh, On the ready though. So it is pretty nice for us. Uh, the one other thing I want to talk about is your inventory. Of course, your inventory will become a bit clogged over the uh, the course of a run. And you want to make sure that you're emptying it out regularly at the town, selling all your stuff. And if you do come across anything you don't need, you can just drop it. As the gold bonus from selling it is not enough to uh, guarantee that you're going to... Or not enough to warrant keeping an item, really. And this is a Percy boss. I think it's just called Percy, but it does a bunch of damage to you. And has two various attack patterns. It can jump at you like that, so he does four damage to you. And you want to make sure you don't get really into any uh, fights with this guy because he has a bunch of, e of HP and he will take a while to kill. So I'm going to go ahead and skip all that because, like I said before, skipping things is not a problem, especially if it will take HP off of you. Now let's see, this boar can go ahead and die. Oh, and yes, my account is logged in elsewhere. Oh no, someone is hacking my account. Jeez. But yes, the boars aren't too hard. I did get hit by him. It does do two damage, which I guess is a pretty big amount, but let me just pause here for one second. There we go. I'm back. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and kill the rest of these guys. And we do go ahead and hit level 10, which is fantastic. Let's uh, pick the ranger skill again. And we do get a skill. Let's just equip our bow. Uh, this one, I think, it makes us fire three arrows at once. Yeah, it's just like that. And it actually is fantastic because uh, basically you fire one arrow. Actually, I'm not sure if it works like that. You fire three arrows at once, and they do uh, the, uh, more damage than regular arrows, I think. I was thinking that it actually shot one arrow and made it three, so you actually get a bonus of arrows, but I don't think that's how it works. Because we have seven right now, and if we shoot, uh, <laughs> well, it wasn't a good example, but if we shoot with our buff equipped, we do have four arrows. Yeah, okay, never mind. But that trait is pretty nice, especially when taking out the boss, as you can do triple the amount of damage you do before. Uh, but anyways, the slime is being annoying, and of course, annoying things that stand in the way of a hero like me are going to get completely obliterated. And here we are to the first set of doors, which does not have a uh, forest biome as an option. So this will get a bit intense for us anyway. So we have the ice biome with the cave biome. And the cave biome is home to spiders and bats and brood mothers and nasty things. And the ice biome is <laughs> home to more nasty things. So let's go ahead and go to the cave. I remember when I started the game, the cave was a bit of a... It was a biome that I always avoided, but in most of the guys I've done so far, uh, the cave is actually one of the better biomes to go to because they do have these bosses called the Broodmothers, which are, if you are playing a ranged character, is very uh, nice to take out because they do uh, give a lot of HP potions and EXP. Uh, so if you're a melee character though, I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you do have a pretty nice powered sword, like the Obsidian Sword, and you're doing a lot of damage. But anyways, we do have some more HP potions to craft. You want to make sure that you get on top of everything and your inventory, start your inventory as you're at every town because the towns are generally like a safe haven and I'm very very thankful for all you hospitable folks in this town. But I think now that we have enough uh, monster hides and iron ice we can go ahead and craft ourselves some armor. And if you guys haven't noticed before these are the armor slots for crafting armor but this is all for melee armor. So what we're going to do here is craft one, two, three, one, two, three, right like that. Make ourselves three ironite bars. And then we can go ahead and combine the monster hides, like this, to make ourselves some refined leather. And you can make yourself melee armor by going like this. A helmet and a chest plate. But what I'm going to do is go up here to the Tanner. Hello, Mr. Tanner. It's been a while since I've seen you. Refine your monster hide. Yes, that's a good tip. We can go ahead and place the refined leather and the ironite bars up here. And make ourselves some elegant leather. And with that, you can make yourself an elegant cap like this. Bam. And that cap will basically give you a dex bonus and an HP bonus, so it is definitely worth making. We can also go ahead and make ourselves some more uh, arrows to take out the Broodmothers. Of course, we don't have that many arrows, so I won't be taking out too many. Uh, we don't have enough Goldium to make a, uh, a Goldium pick, so I think this will be a good point to go ahead and uh, move on to the cave biome. I will not be trying to kill another Chicken Boss or Chicken King because that did destroy the durability on my, uh, my stone uh, sword there, so... 
<laughs> not the best. But of course, the cave biome home to the bats, which you just saw, and the uh, spiders. Of course, it can be a bit intimidating at the, at the first thought because these guys do take a lot of hits from your sword. Uh, but don't be too worried because, of course, with practice, you'll learn the pa attack patterns of these guys. I did take a bunch of damage there, which is not the best. Of course, these eggs up here are what, is what I was talking about before, the broodmother eggs, which will spawn a, a giant boss, so I'd be careful with dealing with those. So let's see if we can't come down here and use our fire wisp to take out this guy. Bam! Double damage of the arrows is always great to have. And uh, we can take all these spiders out at once. Of course, they do take a lot more damage, and they are a bit heftier than the spiders in the forest. So you want to make sure that you have a sword, and mine's about to break. Can we kill it? Yes, we do. Great. Okay, so now I think uh, we don't have any stone to... Mm, this is a bit of a dire situation here. We have the obsidian sword, which I guess I'll use for now. Uh, but until we actually get to mine some stuff, I want to make sure that I have another sword at the ready, because the obsidian sword only has 100 durability, and it does a ton of damage, though. And over here, we do have the broodmother eggs. So if you step on too many of those, a broodmother, a gigantic spider queen, will spawn. And that chest actually gave me an archer's ring, which is fantastic. The rings obviously give a bonus to a certain stat, as well as a negative to some stats. Some rings do that. But the Archer's Ring gives us plus 8 dex, so that's fantastic for us. It does give us minus 2 HP, which is not too bad, as uh, our HP is not full anyway. Uh, you want to make sure that if you're, if you're equipping items with minus 2 HP or minus 5 HP or whatever, you want to make sure that your HP pool isn't full, otherwise you will be losing HP. So, for example, if I equip this ring and I'm at 20 HP, and it rings down to 18, and I de-equip it, I'll be at 18 out of 20. So, you will lose uh, 20 HP, uh, so it's not really worth equipping a ring that you're not going to use. Uh, because it will lose you some HP. But these uh, these bats are being troublesome. They're basically just like flying slimes. They charge at you for a little bit and then they just stop. And so it's not too hard to take them out. If you learn their pattern, bam, just like that. And the spiders are getting too shot by my sword now. Uh, I want to mine some stone as quickly as possible though. So I can actually grab myself a stone sword. I don't have enough yet. I did neglect the fact that I, I uh, my stone sword was running out of a... Uh, running out of a juice. You want to make sure that you never forget that. Make sure that you're always on top of your uh, your stone sword usage or your weapon usage or your pick or whatever. So that way you're not running out in the middle of the level. And you can't actually refine stuff. And that's the other thing I, I've seen a lot of Magicite players do wrong is refine things without needing to. So if you don't need to refine something, don't. Because if you mine raw resources, right, it will take up less inventory space just to keep them as they are than to actually refine them. So say if I refine all this wood into planks. Of course, sorry about that. Uh... If I do mine more wood, then that wood will take an extra inventory space. There's no point in doing that. And of course, there's no point in smelting all my ironite, because if I'm mining more ironite on this level, there's no point in, in smelting it in the town before if I'm not going to use it, and then having to take an extra inventory space. So it's always good to not refine your stuff until you actually really need to, and use that to craft things. Of course, there are some things you can't control, like uh, if you get a drop of a goldium bar like I did there, uh, but it's always good uh, in that regard, uh, good to do that. Let's go ahead and craft ourselves a stone sword and pick our last ranger skill, which is our pet, uh, a pet dog, there we go. He's not too good, actually, he's a bit glitchy, he doesn't even do any damage. Uh, sometimes he does damage, sometimes he doesn't. We are in a, ooh, there we go, so you, you saw the delay in damage there. It did 11 damage after he left, so it's a bit buggy, but it's pretty good for now. Uh, these spiders do take a lot of hits from the sword, but it, they do give it a good amount of gold and EXP, so it, it is worth taking them out. I haven't been spawning any broodmothers yet, because I don't think we are ready for them <laughs> with our gear as it is right now. We are definitely not ready for them. The ring did give us a, a nice boost to our uh, our arrow damage, but I don't think it's enough to uh, warrant <laughs> taking out a broodmother. And I am in a tight spot here. I took a bunch of damage. There's a, a lot of enemies down there. I want to make sure that I'm not spawning too many broodmothers as well. Uh, let's go ahead and restore all of our stats for a second and whip out our bow and start taking some pot shots at these guys. 23 damage is of course a lot better than 13 or whatever we were doing before. And there we go. If your arrows do miss, you can go ahead and pick them up, which is uh, obviously a nice perk to being a ranger. Uh, yes, let's take these guys out. And I think if you get uh, too close to these guys, it's okay, you can take them out with your sword. But obviously the, the bow it does make it a bit safer for you to take them out. Uh, let's see. There we go. We can kill that guy and mine ourselves some more Iron Knight for arrows later on. Of course, uh, like I said before, on your first run, you're not, you're not going to go too far. And by the time that you actually get to the Scourge Lair, you're probably going to have a nice amount of hats and companions and things. So by the time... I might not beat this run because playing as the Peon just basically is one of the hardest things to beat the game with. 
But this red biome over here, even though it looks pretty bloody, is actually called the Velt. And the Velt is home to mushrooms and creatures and things like that. And the mushrooms are a bit harder than the things that are in the cave, so I think I will be keeping going, or keeping on going, and going to the cave. Let's see here, we are in district number 8, the Grand Deep Cave. So let's talk to the merchant, and see if I can't go ahead and sell some stuff that I don't need. Don't need these 27 spider webs from killing all the spiders. And the vials of poisons are basically useless. But, I mean, I, I've never used them before. But if you can find a way to use them, uh, then uh, good for you. Basically, just throw them down and they, like, <laughs> put some poison or a poison gas cloud on the ground. And it does just do more damage to you than I've, uh, than I've seen done damage to enemies. So it is not worth using it, in my opinion. Let's go back down here and make ourselves a Goldium pick, just like this. There we go. Nice Goldium blade. And, of course, with three sticks, we can go ahead and make ourselves the Goldium pick, just like that. And of course, while I'm here, let's make ourselves uh, two, actually not two, I will make just, uh, let's see here, just one Ironite Sword for now. Let's go ahead and do that. And make sure that we're on top of our damage dealing uh, abilities, because the Iron Sword does do 50% more damage, I think, than the Stone Sword. This is four, this is eight. So yes, it does double the damage, of course, which is pretty, pretty nice. So let's go ahead and sell our old tools. And uh, I think we should be good to progress onwards to the next next district. Of course, uh, you have the diamond I picked there. I would recommend saving up your gold and uh, for a diamond I pick because that's the best way of doing it. You can use a diamond I for other things that way. And the diamond I pick will become very very useful later on when you're facing the scourge. As uh, in this lair, you will find these different ores which can only be mined using a diamond I pick. So you want to make sure that you grab one of those as soon as possible. And of course, the higher tier that you go up with, the more durability your weapon will have, so it's always great to advance through the tiers. Make sure you're not neglecting your weapon upgrades. And we do snag ourselves a pretty good weapon from that chest, an Emerald Katana, which I will go ahead and equip. It does give us plus 11 attack instead of the plus 8, which is pretty, pretty nice. And of course, I haven't run into any fake rocks yet, but basically there are these things called Mimic Rocks, I think, or Rock Lobsters, uh, which uh, are fake rocks, which look like the Iron Knight Rocks but do go ahead and jump out at you. They will drop Iron Knight still, but they are they will attack you, so you have to be wary of those. To be safe, what I normally do is just fire an arrow at the rock before I go, and, go ahead and mine it, or I approach it pretty cautious, cautiously and just take it out with a bow. Uh, but yes, they don't, they don't spawn too often. And we do have a Zwei Hander here, and a Zwei Hander is a hefty weapon, or a heavy weapon, or a long sword, or there are many terms for it. Basically, what happens is when you swing it, it does take a, a wind up or a, a few more seconds than a regular sword to swing. Although it does do, as you guys saw, 35 damage compared to 11. Although two hits of the Emerald Katana is much faster than, uh, obviously, swinging the Zwei Hander. So I think, in my opinion, the Zwei Hander is not that great of a weapon to start off with, although you can make yourself a huge, uh, a, a legendary weapon, actually, out of the Zwei Hander later on. But obviously for a basic guide, that is not something we'll be diving into just yet. Uh, let's see here. Bat, you can die as well. And that is a Mimic Chest. As you can see, it does. Uh, it is a bit different from the other chests. Uh, the other chests don't have the little red tongue sticking out, so you can go ahead and kill those. And the Mimic Chests actually have a good chance to drop some pretty good stuff. If I can kill it, there we go. Uh, they don't really attack you unless they, you're a bit too close. But he did drop some diamondites, which is fantastic for us. And we do have ourselves a big mysterious potion. And mysterious potions have a chance of being a poison, a vial of poison, uh, a mana restoring one, or a HP restoring one. So if we use that, it is a poison one. That's why you always should jump before using them. Make sure you don't get yourself poisoned. Let's drop the Zwei Hander and the uh, Iron Arrow just because I don't need those yet. And I would have, I would have liked having an HP restoring potion, but oh well. I guess uh, it, it just wasn't meant to be. It was not meant to be at all. And oh, I'm taking a bit of damage here. But luckily, our Emerald Katana is doing as much damage as our sword, and that bat was kind enough to drop two HP potions, so that made up for the damage it did to me. I can go ahead and restore it all up, just like that, and take some pot shots here at these guys. Drop our Fire Wisp and do some extra damage. Of course, using your abilities whenever possible is always a good idea, because I've seen a lot of new Magic Sight players just kind of ignore their abilities. And the abilities are there for a reason. They do make your arrows more efficient, they help you out with the damage, and it's always good to use them. Of course, this guy is not very, very good, so I would not use him too much, as he can cause some different gl glitches to happen. So let's go ahead and continue onwards. These spiders down here will give me a bit of trouble, but I think our bow will be enough to take them out. And if you are at my stage, like I said before, you shouldn't be angering the Broodmothers because 
and they do a ton of damage. Have a bunch of HP and generally it's just not worth it to take out. We do run out of arrows here, which is a bit strange. I thought I had a bunch more, but oh well. We can kill that chest, which doesn't give us the uh, the drops that the other one did, which is fine. I was hoping for another Diamondite bar, which I'm, I guess I'm not too lucky to go ahead and grab one of those, but... Let's see here, we have some more spiders, of course. More and more spiders, why did it have to be spiders? Why did it have to be spiders? Always spiders. But yeah, there isn't very much variety in the enemies in the cave. Uh, hopefully when we get to the next biome, it will be a bit more diverse, but I'm trying to show you the ideal, opt well, the optimal a uh, playthrough of Magicite, which is of course to stick to the easy biomes, uh, gather uh, as much EXP as possible, and of course the resources, uh, gather a lot of resources. Let's go ahead and make some more arrows, because arrows are a good time. And I did, unfortunately, awaken a Brewmother. Uh, let's see, should I take this guy out? I guess I could try. Just for the camera. <laughs> but let's see, we can go ahead and spawn our uh, Fireball, and do some damage to this Brewmother. They do have a bunch of HP, so I wouldn't recommend taking them out. But they do give you a bunch of EXP and, res and res uh, HP potions. There you go, it wasn't actually too hard. So those red little orbs of EXP do give you, uh, I think, a bonus to EXP. That was pretty good. Uh, but obviously for your first time playing, I would not recommend taking those guys out. Uh, but let's see here. Uh, these uh, these bats are going to be a bit annoying. And of course, if you do try to run through the game as a peon, it will take a lot of time. As you can see, I'm, I'm already at 40 minutes. And this playthrough obviously has a... Has, oh, I've only been halfway through. I'm only on district number 9, I think, right now. And I've already play, been playing for about uh, 40 minutes, so... And we'll take you a bit longer if you don't have any bonuses to your stats or anything. So let's see, we do snag ourselves in the diamond bar. Fantastic. We can go ahead and make ourselves the, uh, I don't want to drop that. Go ahead and make ourselves the diamond I pick I was talking about earlier, which is fantastic. Like I said before, don't make a Diamondite sword before making the pick. That's a, a common mistake I see in most Magicite players. They're like, oh, the Diamondite blade! I must make a sword out of that, right? No, because the Obsidian sword actually does 30 damage, and the Diamondite sword only does 25. And plus, you can actually mine Diamondite and gold with the Diamondite pick, as well as Crystalline Shards, which you do find in the uh, other biome. And I did take not too long in that biome. The Scourge have invaded. But of course, these are the three doors here. We can go ahead and go to the, vel the dungeon. The, the, this, the, this castle kind of biome here is a bit more difficult, although the rewards from it are much greater. But let's go ahead and go to the Velt, the mushroom biome. Green wood Velt, even though it's kind of red. Uh, we almost have enough uh, gold to buy a diamond pick. Of course, we already have one, so we can go ahead and pray to the altar. Uh, Give us plus five attack. Fantastic. That's all actually pretty, pretty good. We do have uh, a nice 30 attack now, which will help out a lot in this, in this biome here. So let's go ahead and sell some spider webs. And things like that, so let's see. We do have enough monster hides to uh, make ourselves a, another piece of Iron Knight armor. Just like this, there you go. And we can go ahead and craft some more Iron Knight bars. Just like that, there we go, there we go. Uh, let's see up here. Go to the Tanner, the Tanner you can go ahead and smelt some of my stuff. Mr. Tanner. And make sure I don't make the same mistake like I did in my mage run where I accidentally made two caps instead of making a cloak. But yeah, basically, Magicite is a very, very fun game. Survival, platformer, roguelike, uh, whatever the genre is, <laughs> which I'm not really sure about. It is very, very fun, in my opinion. I sunk a bunch of hours into it. I hope you guys all enjoy the game, as I do. And I hope that I've been a, uh, a good guide for you guys. Uh, this has been the, only the start of the game. Of course, most people will not come to this point at the game on their first time trying it. And it has been a while, so 43 minutes in terms of my recording. Uh, <laughs> But we do have some pretty nice stuff here, actually. The Obsidian Sword, we have a nice set of armor, uh, Emerald Katana, a Diamond Eye Pick. And we are in a pretty good position uh, in this run. Uh, of course, uh, venturing through the next biomes or so, you will see different kinds of enemies. You will see uh, tough enemies, but of course, always keep your head held high and make sure that you keep practicing and hit the mobs and dodge out of the way. And if you just keep doing it, you will uh, prevail through the <laughs> perilous Deep Haven. But I hope you guys really enjoyed this guide. Of course, if you do want me to finish this guide or finish this uh, this run, uh, make sure to like the video, comment down below what you thought, and uh, if you guys do like this video enough, I will come out with a more advanced guide. But of course, if this is your first time playing Magicite or you're just watching this game or watching this uh, video, uh, trying to buy the game, I would recommend yes, it is a uh, pretty cheap game, I would say, and you will have a lot of fun playing it. And of course, you can't play it with your friends. So. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe for more. I will see you guys next time.